So at the end of 2019, I wanted to develop a new show for Hell Together. Uh, we were invited to be a part of the Garage Theater's uh, comedy extravaganza uh, in mid-November, and I thought that was a good opportunity to try something new. Um, and I had this idea for a s improvised superhero story for a while, and so I just spent um, a lot of time re-watching uh, the superhero movies, like the Dark Knight trilogy, uh, the Marvel films, of course, um, the DC films, uh, Wonder Woman, Aquaman, um, and uh, as well as some of the TV shows, and just wrote down as many tropes as I could find, you know, all the different types of superhero stories. Um, and then I got a cast together that included some members of the troupe as well as some uh, members of the community. And we just, over the course of maybe six or seven rehearsals, we developed the show. Uh, that first rehearsal, we had no idea what the show was going to look like. Um, and we just kind of played around with some stuff. And, and uh, by the end, we ended up creating a um, hour long uh, improvised movie trilogy, uh, which was the origins of, uh, I think it was Invisigirl. Uh, and that was an audience suggested uh, superpower. And uh, it was just really, really cool. It was really cool to develop something that as far as I know, uh, no other improv school had developed. I, I, there's a lot of different narrative improv out there. Uh, I've not seen a, a narrative superhero genre. So that was cool to kind of be maybe the first to do that. Um, and uh, it was a really, really cool experience working with this really super talented cast and putting together something that was just a flicker of an idea in my brain at one point. When did you first hear about Held Together and why did you want to be part of such a great company like Hell Together Company? Uh, I'll start with this one. Um, so I was already taking improv classes up in like deep in LA. I'm from Anaheim, so I did it for about a year until I got tired of the traffic and the drive. It was about an hour drive for me. So I was looking for something more local. So I did the usual thing. I went on Yelp. Um, looked up uh, improv classes, and the one that stood out to me the most was Held Together, uh, based off reviews. Um, so, took my first class. I think Richard was my first teacher, um, and then never looked back since. And the reason why I stayed was mainly the camaraderie that this company brings, um, uh, the friendships. It's the, the very welcoming environment that, because uh, improv can be very intimidating for a lot of people. And so when you have this welcoming environment, it, it can, it really helps. So that's, that's mainly why I stayed. Um, I'll go next, I suppose. Um, so I, I found improv just kind of by chance. I was on the, the recreation um, classes page on the for Long Beach Rec. And I was just browsing the different classes that they offer. They offer like every different type of extracurricular class you could want. And I came across improv and I was hesitant. And be, but I, what I was really doing was looking for something exciting because I was kind of bored. I was just working and living and single and had nothing really exciting going on. So I thought, you know, the most exciting thing is really the most terrifying thing. And that would be improv. <laughs> so I signed up and I didn't know it was held together because all it said was improv class really um, on the page there. So I signed up and my first class was with Kendra. She was my level one teacher. And it was just so much fun, I mean, I went in obviously terrified, but it was just, yeah, so welcoming and fun. And, and um, there were people who were retaking level one. So that showed me like a little bit of the next level to be. And I always want to be reaching for that next level. And I thought, yeah, I want to be as good as them. So I got to keep going. And I kept going. And now I'm still going. <laughs> I found it through the Parks and Rec, the Long Beach Parks and Rec um, little magazine as well. Uh, 
for me, I had, at that time, I had two kids and I hadn't been doing anything for myself. And, you know, I'd been going through the Parks and Rec catalog, finding classes for them. And <laughs> at that point, I was like, I should look, for, look up something for me too. And um, I think it was, in, it was like under the enrichment section. So they had like, like other self-help things. And I saw them like, oh, improv. Like, I mean, I've never thought about doing improv because um, I've done some acting classes in LA. And I think I, that was sort of the direction I was going towards. And then when I saw improv, I'm like, oh, it's Long Beach. This is so cool that it's like a 10 minute drive instead of like two hours in traffic both ways, you know? And so it's like, okay, you know what? This is good. This, this means improv. There's not really going to be any homework, like in acting where you have to <laughs> memorize stuff. I'm like, this is exactly what I needed having with like two young kids at home. I can, you know, drive 10 minutes. I can have fun and then I can come home and not have to memorize lines and, you know, and then, and then just go back the following week. So, so yeah, that's kind of how I started. I can go next. Um, so I had moved to Long Beach in the summer of 2017. Uh, and I'd been looking for like, you know, a community and friends. I didn't know too many people in the area. And it was actually the end of 2018 when um, I was like on the meetup app and just like browsing like events going on that weekend. And I came across um, held together was putting on a show, an improvised romantic comedy. And I was like, that's amazing. Let's, let's go. And so I went to the show and I was just blown away. I was, I was a theater kid growing up and I'd done a little bit of improv in high school. And so I was just like, this is awesome. I didn't know this was here in Long Beach all this time. Um, and then I saw that they were offering classes. So I signed up and I started with a level one class at the beginning of 2019 with Richard as my instructor. And that was amazing. And I was hooked like immediately, like first day of class, I was like, I'm staying here forever. And I have so far. <laughs> and it's been awesome. And to, you know, you know, echo what everybody else is saying, the community was just so welcoming. It's exactly what I was looking for. There was people of all ages, of all backgrounds, different jobs, different like reasons for why they got there and were interested in it. And it was it was awesome and I haven't looked back at all since and it's just so much fun um and yeah and I got basically a piece of my life that I hadn't really like done a lot of the kind of theater element back through all together um uh I am I, I'm like a, a huge introvert and so a while ago I was like oh I don't I need to get out there I need to do something more than I guess the same thing as Kayla like, like eat, sleep, work, and play video games. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was like looking for something uh, like to do. And then, and you know, every, you, you catch episodes of Whose Line Is It Anywhere? And you're like, that looks so great. I wonder, oh. And then like, so I looked up uh, classes on, on Google and then Held Together was like that, that perfect combination of affordable and had amazing reviews. Uh, I think Victor was touching on that. Like, it's just like all the reviews are like, they're so nice. It's a great community. It's wonderful. And and when you start taking the classes there, that's exactly what you get. Uh, I also had Kendra for my first class, and uh, it was so welcoming. Like, even for someone like me who's like, I I don't know if I want to talk right now, or I, I. And then it's like, oh, just we're just doing a goofy thing. Like, okay, and then it just brings everyone together and it's amazing so why is improv important to you has how has it helped you and how has held together helped your improv skills i guess i'll take this one again <laughs> um improv for me uh especially nowadays when we're we're, we're very technologically dependent um, you always have like a computer screen in between us and the other person for most of us. Um, I feel doing improv really puts you back in the moment of being with someone, uh, especially on stage in front of an audience to really connect with them. Uh, because in my, in my life, it's very rare to find that because one, 
everyone you talk to always has a cell phone in their hand and it's kind of like you're kind of battling their attention uh for their phones um but improv has really really helped create that that habit of uh being in a moment with someone and having a conversation with them and really actively listening to them um and i don't think there's any other art form that would really push you to do that and really truly trust the other person um as you are in that moment with them and um yeah, I, I feel as a person, like Neil, I was an introvert, um, very much so many years ago. Uh, I, I would say if you would want to interview me at that time, I would say no. <laughs> um, but now I, I feel it's, it's helped me build enough confidence in myself to put myself out there in the world and to trust that who I am is good enough. And I, and I believe Held Together has created that stepping stone to help me get to that better me. So that's, yeah, that's how I feel about Held Together and the improv. So yeah, uh, like those guys, I was also an introvert. And I think even more than just being an introvert, I was very like monotone, like very like stoic and not really showing much emotion anytime I talk at all. And um improv like one of my favorite games is emotional fishbowl where you just pull an emotion out of out of a hat you read it and you immediately have to do that emotion to an 11 while you're doing a random scene of improv and it just like forces you to go so far out of your normal shell and then it, it it's just it's fun and it's like just great helpful training for normal everyday like existence people don't want to talk to somebody who's just like straight up monotone very reserved they want to like really actually know you and it helped me you know just emote much more when talking and and then on top of that just being on stage and all of that stuff I hadn't really done much at all before and it like I said, I, I signed up to do something scary and it gives you such a rush, even in class, just doing a tiny little exercise on stage in front of five or six people. It's such a rush every time because it's so unknown and it's great when you get laughs and it's so much fun and they're so encouraging that it like helps build your confidence and, and everything like that and it helps definitely come out of your shell. Um, help me come out of my shell. And I see that a lot with Held Together especially because I've also taken now some classes in LA where it seems a bit more competitive and, and they're a bit stricter and harsher with their notes and stuff. And it's not necessarily as confidence building, but Held Together is very supportive and um, they just help you become much more confident. That's where I was going to go to is I think doing improv has helped me become more daring and just be more confident in situations. Like I'm, I'm naturally a very cautious person. So a lot of times I'll run through entire scenarios in my head <laughs> before like actually acting on something. But with improv, you, you can't do that. You just have to act on your impulse and you have to, and the bigger you go, the better, because then it gives your partner options. Who And you just have to trust that going big, your your partner will save you. And, and then the two of you will have some back and forth rapport. So that's one thing for me anyway, is it's definitely just trying not to run through entire scenarios. Yeah, absolutely. I relate to that so much as well, Agnes. I... <laughs> has helped me get out of my head I'm a naturally pretty anxious person and when I'm doing improv like none of that exists you're like fully in the moment um and otherwise I'd say improv has helped me basically feel like myself again which is like kind of a weird thing to say but I could tell that for a while I was like going down like the corporate route like just go to work go home repeat that kind of thing and I was losing like 
the silliness and the playfulness of like what really makes me me. And when I got back into improv, that like tapped straight back into that and then really like opened the door to like a lot of other creative things that I had kind of like put to the side. Um, and yeah, it just lets you be so, it lets you be a kid again. It lets you tap into your imagination. It lets you play. Like who doesn't want to do that as an adult? Um, and yeah, really, really allows you to live moment to moment and, you know, take what you're doing in class and then apply it in real life situations where you might have otherwise hesitated or been anxious before. And now you have that confidence where you're like, well, in class, I do those crazy things and the world doesn't go burning up in fire. Well, I guess I could try it here too. Um, yeah, just to echo everyone, really. Uh, it's just, it's a real confidence booster. Uh, it also is, I think, like stress relief almost. Like, like Nelly said, we, we're adults and we play pretend, you know, for like a two hour class and it's just a good time for everybody. And I don't know about, I don't want to talk for everyone else, but it just, it, it feels like those, those, whenever you're in a class or doing a show and just with all the people that you trust so much, it just, it just makes you feel lighter and better. And even though it's scary, you know, you can face it down with, with people, with the people you trust. And it, it, it's just like, uh, like held together is an amazing community. Uh, I don't know if there's some kind of shadowy background thing where they're calling people who aren't part of this community, but like everyone here who who sticks around, I I mean they're they're all great people. So and yeah, everything else, confidence and all that good jazz too. Tell me when did you hear about them thinking of doing this production called Mass the Mayhem? Why did you want to be part of it, and why was it such an enjoyable event to do? I'll go first again. Um, I first heard about Masks and Mayhem. I, think, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, Richard. I think you guys did it the year prior. Um, no, this was our first time doing it. Oh, was it? Oh, okay. Then I stand corrected. Um, it, I might have been confusing it with one of your past uh, shows then, improv shows you guys did last year. Um, but Richard did invite me to join. Uh, I could have said no, but I didn't. And the reason why I didn't was because one, I love I love superheroes, and two, like who wouldn't want to play a superhero in a, a stage play, especially improv. Um, and I've been with Held Together for about I want to say three years, so I felt this, and this this was my first long form show, improv show. And I, I felt that the, being three years into Hell Together, being around this community, I felt, you know, it was, it was safe enough to kind of take this risky venture because doing, I believe it was 45 minutes to an hour on stage of just make-believe in front of a live audience is scary. Um, but I trusted the company and I trusted uh, Richard and the direction he was uh, taking us. And I trusted my uh, castmates of um, yes, ending everything. And so, yeah, it turned out to be a very scary uh, experience, but at the same time, very liberating because it turned out very well. Nothing bad happened. <laughs> As worst case scenario, you, you begin to think of these things before you you walk on stage and you get really nervous. But yeah, everything turned out to be an, an awesome experience. So, um, Yeah, like Victor said, I had been doing the improv for a few years, and maybe five years by then. And it's always so much fun when they, when they try and introduce something new, something slightly different than the... This, the normal games we play, they're always adding new games, but a whole new show concept was really fun. I'm not, I'm not like some, I'm not, I've never been obsessed with superheroes or anything, but with all the movies coming out, I've definitely seen them all and like starting to learn the tropes and all that. And that was kind of the challenging thing about that is, is teaching us all the tropes and getting us to make sure we do it superhero-y. Um, but I thought the coolest thing was how in normal improv level one, level two, like each game is kind of iteratively 
more complicated and it takes you from very simple to very to like the final like show type games and then Richard adapted all those games to be iteratively more complicated in terms of the superhero movie and tropes and it basically helped it, even somebody not really obsessed with all that or had that in the back of my mind it was it was pretty seamless in terms of learning how to introduce all those into the into the format and do it right and then we did it and it worked out i guess i'll go next cuz i've been third <laughs> <laughs> um it's funny, we were actually talking about this before you came on, Buell. <laughs> and, and we were saying, I think it was about like this time last year that we first got together for our first rehearsal. And, and, when, um, and when we first went, I think what really interested, what was interesting for me is this was, like Kale said, this was a brand new concept. And this is, uh, this was the first show I'd been a part of where I was actually part of the creative process in terms of how the structure was going to go. Cause normally um, all the other shows that at, le that at least I had been in, you know, you walk in the first day and you get a couple of pages of things saying, okay, this is the structure. You know, these are the points you have to hit in the first scene. This is what usually happens in the second scene. This is what usually happens, but this was fun. Like we walked in, I mean, I'm not sure what Richard had planned or if he was like, I'm going to do a show and you guys are going to plan it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was fun though. Cause we went in and we we're like, we were just like um, geeks. You know, we talked about what we liked about superhero shows. And then from there, we Richard helped us to organize. Okay. This is what you guys all like because this is the structure of it. And these are things that happen in every superhero show or in every superhero movie. And then, um, yeah. Oh, and one other thing I really liked about, this particular show is um sometimes information comes up and 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 it's like whoa how do we incorporate this how do we fix this this is like totally off the wall but with superheroes you know they have powers and so you can all of a sudden say hey i all of a sudden have this magical ability to create fireballs and throw them at people whereas you know in normal everyday life you can't do that but with what i liked about this show is anyone can magically have a new superpower and that will justify the weird little mistake that just happened in the show. For me, I think I had just finished taking the long form narrative class for the first time right before Richard reached out about this show and I was in love with long form narrative. It was made up plays. Like I was like, come on, like what can be better? And then to combine that with, you know, the superhero aspect was just so, so, so exciting. And, you know, to reflect everything, like we all had very similar experiences coming into it. Richard was really open about the creative process and all of us like learning together, like what worked and didn't. I think initially we had planned on doing just like one and then we turned it into like three parts. Um, so it's like a whole saga in like one show and we were like, can we do it? And we just kept practicing and then we were like, we can. <laughs> Um, so yeah, it was really, really cool. Just experimenting and like Agnes said, being part of that part of the process and having uh, building, building a show together. Yeah, I was super excited for a, for a superhero long form narrative because because uh, Held Together has done stuff like soap operas and uh, I think romantic comedies and stuff, but like for for it to get into the nitty gritty of like the nerd genre, I mean, <laughs> like it, it was I was so happy to be like, oh, finally all the <laughs> the tropes and the the nerdy things in my brain about why a Batman or why a villain does this or that or captures this person finally all coming together. So, and it was super fun to be on like the ground floor. As everyone said, we were kind of like, Oh, we were kind of designing the whole structure as we go along. Like, wouldn't this be amazing as the trilogies that we're seeing all over the place? Can we, and what happens in those trilogies? Here's the structure that we're designing. It was amazing. I just want to, I want to add um, one, the name masks mayhem uh, came from, came from Neil. Uh, and that was just an amazing, amazing title. And also like very prophetic. Uh, Cause we are now currently in an era of masks and mayhem. Um, and two, it was, it was super cool. Just putting like putting, 
coming with together with this group and there were there were uh one two three four five there were six other people in the cast as well and just kind of like hey here's here's some ideas let's let's put something together uh, and i do have to say there it, there was there was a strategic uh element on on putting the cast together in terms of uh people who i knew had some superhero fandom uh in, in them uh, as well as people who i knew were going to really thrive in in um in narrative i think there were some cast members who had never done narrative prior to our show so um that was really cool to give them this introduction in this really heightened um format tell me why this was the perfect team to perform the first superhero improv show so putting together this team it was very it's like it's like I was the Nick Fury of of Held Together, you know. Like, all right, we, we're gonna need we're gonna need Neil's superhero, uh, you know, wealth of knowledge and and Agnes's narrative experience, and so you know, and and so forth. And and uh, you know, in my mind originally, it was probably gonna be like an eight person uh, show. And then as I was just listing, making lists, I like to make lists. Uh, so I was just making lists in my house. I was like, oh wait, but what about this person? And, Ah, this person too, and and then it got to eleven, and I was like, "All right, that's probably enough people. <laughs> um, let's, let's not make this a twenty-person cast." Um, but it really was just. It, I was really lucky in that, you know, I, I've been a part of not with Held Together, but in in other environments, theater environments where a show wasn't ready, and you know, we sort of were developing it on the go, and it was really um, ego driven. And I didn't get that with this group at all. And I don't think that they got that from me either. I would hope not uh, that it really was like, here's what we're going to build together. You know, like, sure. I'm the director of this, but like, that doesn't mean like, I don't want to hear your voice. Like I wanted to hear the voice. You know, I wanted to hear people's voices because I didn't know how to, how to make it happen. You know, this was my first time putting together a, um, an improv show. Um, you know, a, a new genre, a new, not new genre, a new genre of, uh, of improv. Um, and so, yeah, it really was just the perfect team because everybody, everybody came in with ideas and everybody came in willing to try different people's ideas. Um, and the idea that it came in, you know, the, the trilogy thing was sort of like an offhanded remark, I think at one point. And then I was like, wait, I think maybe we can do that. And then, we did, and it was, it, was, it was nuts that we did. To the rest of the cast, how was Richard's enthusiasm and his fandom of, of superheroes helped you in really making this what it was? Yeah, you know what? Uh, going into it, I had no idea what the process was going to be like. Um, but what did really help uh, was Richard's... Uh, like, I, I, I guess you, I don't want to say you didn't have a vision. I know you had a vision, but you, even though you had this vision, you allowed us to, and I, I know you already spoke on this a, a bit. You allowed a cat, how many cast members was it 11 of us? 11. Or no, 11. Okay. So for you to be able to manage 11 I, different ideas and to mold it into one and to create masks and mayhem, I mean, that, I mean, that takes a lot of talent and skill, in my opinion. And knowing that you, uh, and for me to experience that during how, how long we were, we were rehearsing for a couple months, right? Like two, three yeah, months. Two, three months. Um, about once, and then eventually do twice a week. Um, I mean, I can't imagine myself being in your situation because I, I wouldn't, I don't think I'd be able to uh, produce the show as well as uh, the one you did that we all did. But um, I think you were able to kind of bring us all together and uh, be like the core of the group um, and choosing the best held together actors that you can find <laughs> that put the show together. I think, yeah. So uh, I found that very inspirational, Richard. I'll say, like I, like I was saying earlier, we, I, my favorite part is that we, 
I remember the first rehearsal, at, or at least the first one that I could attend, we weren't even in the stage area of the expo. We were outside of it in a circle. And we were just kind of like naming superhero tropes to each other and doing all these smaller exercises that just like got into our minds all the things we were allowed, like encouraged and allowed to put in and like things that I wouldn't have thought of everyone else was thinking of and naming and it just like put every superhero style thing you could think of into our brains and that kind of those kind of smaller games made it much easier going moving over to the actual stage part of it and trying to play characters that made sense in superhero realms and all that and so the first beginning exercises were great and then, um, yeah, Richard was playing around with when do we introduce like suggestions and how do we introduce them and bringing, I think for our, yeah, it was just like words from a hat to like for superpowers or weird objects or whatever and playing with when those are introduced, how they're introduced and how we have to incorporate them and then being open to, I mean, since it's improv, we never know where it's going to go. And then if it goes somewhere we didn't expect, and then we're all like, wait, maybe we should do it that way. Like we should mean to do it that way. And then we would kind of change the format and then have that just like, that's how the trilogy came to be. We were kind of like, well, what if we split it into three totally distinct areas and then introduce a new suggestion at each part that we had to incorporate and yeah just the whole openness and everybody like 11 different people having ideas throwing them out there and i mean i don't think there were many bad ideas that richard harshly shot down so <laughs> um he was very good at accepting all of our input so for me um i think the part that i found most in most inspiring about Richard <laughs> me <laughs> yes <laughs> is is again like I'm I'm a very cautious person and I I like to plan things out in my head and so coming into the first couple of weeks of rehearsal for this not knowing what the end game plan was for this show and like I, I don't know how, Richard, I don't know how you weren't anxious those first couple of weeks, not knowing that we're, we're putting on a show and we still don't know what the show is. <laughs> but like th that part for me, I've, you know, I'm like, okay, well, Richard's the director. He's, he has confidence this is going to happen. We still don't know what the show is going to be or how it's going to happen, but we'll just keep going to rehearsals. But I found that part inspiring. Just, just trust it where just that he, tr that you, Richard, trusted this process and, knew that by by the I think we had like two months or something by the end of two months we were gonna have a show it was gonna be good it was gonna be funny even though we were still just a bunch of friends talking about our geeky love of superheroes <laughs> uh, agreed I think Richard did such an incredible job of creating like a strong foundation for us to build out from and feel comfortable doing all that experimenting from I remember before we'd even met for the first um, rehearsal, Richard had sent us like a list of like, hey, check out these movies. These will be good, like inspiration for what we'll be doing. And then he even gave us some printouts of like those, you know, the tropes and the character tropes and everything. And we went through it all together. But it was such a perfect balance of like giving us the sort of like guardrails to like work within, but then also being like, we can, we can do anything though. Like this can go anywhere. And I think that that really is inspiring, Richard, because we were kind of like, let's see what happens. Here's like some baseline stuff for us to work with, but it can turn into anything. And having the faith in like, it will be something awesome is just really, really cool. And gave us all the room to be, you know, to play, to really get to just like play with it and let it go wherever it was gonna go. Richard really did create like a good environment for us to build this thing together. Uh, like, like you, you, we would say crazy things like, like, oh, isn't there a part where like they always like have like a fall or something or they start drinking or something? And then it's like, oh, I guess that is like a 
thing that happens usually in one of the third, second or third movie that's, that they have to recover from to show their human elements. And, you know, he, he never, uh, again, he, he, he always like supported the ideas that came out of everyone. And it, it, it was such a good time just to, 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 to be able to say like all the, the nerdy stuff you've always, I don't know about everyone else, but nerdy stuff you always want to talk to about to everybody, but then, you know, there's a, there's an audience and this was like the perfect audience to 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 be like the to perf- the perfect forum to start geeking out and playing with your geeking out and it was so fun and it was all thanks to Richard because he and one of the things I that was I think amazing was that he he chose to direct this show and not be in it but because he was like on the outside like like this is how I want it to look and he could see it from the outside it was like it, it like gave him a perspective that. To, to, to mold and shape this to where he wanted it to go. Oh, I, I couldn't imagine being in it. And because, yeah, you do need that outside eye. We, you know, and one thing that I, that I was really thankful for throughout this experience was that I did have, because um, we had done the John Hughes narrative within the year of, of that show, I think, or maybe a year before. Um, and that show was similar in that, Darren came to us as a class and like, here are the John Hughes tropes. And, and uh, we sort of developed that in a similar way that we did with Masks and Mayhem. Um, in that, like, I think that first day of class, we didn't quite know what the show was going to look like, the John Hughes one. Um, so I fortunately had Darren's uh, model to, to, to emulate. Um, and then to talk to what Neil said, like about nerding out with each other during the John Hughes class, I'm not, I don't really know a lot of John Hughes. So there was some like John Hughes nerding out that I didn't really get to be like super active in. Cause I was kind of watching the movies like the night before, but superhero movies I love. So I, I enjoy being able to like nerd out on something that I had, you know, just knowledge, knowledge of. What do you want the audience to get out of this when they, they click on the YouTube channel, what do you want the people to get out of mask and mayhem? Well, if someone has never done improv before and is considering it and they see the show and they like it, I would highly recommend that they uh, sign up and just not be intimidated by ne- uh, not, not ever doing it before. Um, I've asked, Plenty of my friends, if they're willing to try it, and they all say, no, it's too scary. But for anyone who's, who watches the show and, and loves it and loves superheroes and likes to and has a wild imagination, I would highly recommend just taking that leap of faith. And I promise you'll have Richard and Darren and all the other great teachers uh, walking you through safely through this, this incredible art form. What I would like the audience to get out of watching the show would be First of all, hopefully reminded a lot of actual superhero movies because then we've done our job right. Um, and then also to have all of the loose ends tied up by the end because then we've, we've also done our job right in terms of, because in the beginning we definitely create a lot of loose ends and we're scrambling to tie them all up and satisfy the audience. Um, but yeah, on top of that, just pure entertainment. And if they see us having fun, hopefully they'll either want to come to more shows or eventually sign up or just come to that free drop-in with Richard and tip your, dip your toe in the water and see what it's all about. And it's pretty much guaranteed to be a super fun time. Just trying improv. As scary as it is, it's fun. It's so much fun. So for me, I think what I want the audience to get from this is, well, <laughs> first of all, that this was pre, this was taped before the pandemic. <laughs> We're not breaking social distancing, distancing rules. We're not just getting together in a small theater with an audience <laughs> and throwing this whole pandemic out the window. So disclaimer, that's the first thing I want to say. <laughs> Sharing costume pieces. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah, those are fun too. Just having random costume pieces, <laughs> um, but the the main thing I want people to get out of it is that um, 
you, we can we can really create a show out of any genre. Like, you know, before before Richard, you know, we had never done a superhero narrative show, and I, you know, I just want people to know that you know you can be a fan of any genre. Come to come to hell together. And then talk to Richard, talk to Darren, say, I love this one genre of movies or shows. Is there a way we can put something together and dive into that more? So that's, I think that's what I want people to know. Well, number one, I hope that it entertains people and amuses them, but also like sort of inspires them to get back in touch with their childhood self as well. Because I feel like Masks and Mayhem is like one of the most raw forms of us playing pretend together. It's literally playing superheroes and villains. And like, I hope that watching that show brings you back to your childhood and makes you want to do it again. And improv is a safe place where you can do it and enjoy playing pretend with other adults. And as everyone else has said, highly encourage it. There's free workshops. Please try it out. If it makes you curious in any possible way, it will make your life a million times better. Um, I hope everyone has a good time. It's just like, you know, have a good laugh, enjoy it. And also kind of like, I want people to see like the goofy things that are in superhero movies through our, through our uh, performance. Like, like one of the reasons that it's so fun to do like a very genre specific thing is because you get to, you get to put poke fun at the, at the tropes that are always showing up. And, and so I hope like through, through that, through the lens of improv, you can see like, huh, why does that happen in every hero movie or like, yeah. Wow. Everyone comes back to life. Don't they? Does anyone die for real? So, you know, I, I hope you get those, just those little kernels of things where you, and maybe question your, your movies every once in a while. I really, I really hope that when the audience watches, yeah. One, like Agnes said, they re I'm probably going to put on there filmed November 15th, 2019 before times um and uh but also a couple of things like one um we, we did that sh we we pre performed that show um at the garage theater and so the 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 primary audience for that show was was garage theater uh people uh and so there wasn't a large section of like the held together community who could make it to that show i think there was i think well uh, who knows um uh, so one, it'll be share. It'll be cool to share this this pre-recorded show with our with our audience. And this is the first uh, of several uh, shows that we filmed in previous years that we're going to air um, as you know as as a as a rebroadcast. Because um, you know one of the things about improv is once you perform it, it's sort of done, and you don't ever get to see it again. So you know to know that we do videotape our show, videotape like it's 1985. We do record our shows. Uh, and and they are available to, to see in full um that's really exciting and and yeah like everyone here said i hope it inspires people to to want to play uh some more because that's what that's what that's all we're doing is we're just playing pretend like nelly said why is it important to have a local improv company and why should the long beach community get more involved in it held together um <laughs> from my experience uh the reason to have a good local improv company is you don't have to drive to LA and sit through traffic. Um, and it's, it's kind of unfortunate that most of the acting improv classes are in LA. Uh, very few are, are in Orange County. But um, to, I, I believe if you bring more to uh, to your local area, it does build a better community. It does teach uh, an aver a very important skill set. Uh, I mean, like I said before, um, we're, we are, and I ironically bringing, bringing this up as we're talking through the computer screen, I mean, it's, we're, especially, and especially me, we're, as a society, we're very dependent through communicating through our, uh, our cell phones and computers and all that, but to actually be with someone and to communicate with them, to build that, the, the social skills. Um, I think that's uh, 
very much needed nowadays. Um, and so I think having more, more improv and more acting and more of the arts in the community will, will, I, I believe, build a, build a better community. So, yeah. Not only is held together, it's great to just have a, a different type of entertainment available around that you can go to on a random night. It's very inexpensive. Um, some, some of the shows are free. Some, I, I don't know, the max price we've ever charged is what, $10. So it's a, just a great different, always, it's always different every time. There's no same show twice. Even if you see broken legs two weekends in a row, it's completely different the next time. So it's endless entertainment and very accessible and inexpensive and fun. And you get to know a whole different community from whatever you're in right now. And then on top of that, um, I think a majority of us have gone and taken classes in LA because of Held Together introducing us to improv. And so it's also a great feeder school for anybody who is interested in or becomes interested in going to the much like the higher levels in Hollywood and all that. Um, like Neil said, it's more, it's inexpensive compared to those schools. And so it's a great um, get your experience first and then go to the, to the more intense schools and the more expensive schools after that. So it's, it's both purely Long Beach entertainment and it's a great stepping stone or feeder school to those, those bigger schools in LA. So I think what I want people to know is that, you know, Long Beach is sort of halfway between LA and Orange County. We're not, we're not LA, we're not Orange County. Like Long Beach has its own culture and it's, you know, even though, you know, we're around like these huge other metropolitan cities, like we are, Long Beach itself is a huge city as well. Like it would be, it would be the largest city in, in many states. Don't quote me on that. I didn't look it up, but let's, let's just pretend I'm, I'm right. <laughs> but um, no, you know, it's, it's a, it's a very large city and, and what's fun about uh, having improv school in Long Beach and having audience that are from Long Beach, we can we can talk about things that are in Long Beach. Like we often bring up Mayor Garcia, you know, where in LA, they would probably never ever talk about Mayor Garcia, <laughs> like Robert Garcia, because it's like, why bring up another city's mayor? But, you know, we, we bring him up so many times in our shows because he, he's the Long Beach mayor, you know, and we'll talk about different things in Long Beach. Like, well, you know, we'll oftentimes bring up the Queen Mary or we'll bring up um, Bixby Knowles. Like, we'll just bring up things that are very uh, unique to Long Beach. And so for, for Long Beach residents to come to our show, they'll, you know, I think it's fun for them to think, hey, that's just right down my street. I know exactly what they're talking about. I go there all the time. So I think that definitely separates us from uh, schools in LA. I think for me, it's just the, co the community aspect, like staying local allows you to invest in your immediate community. And I always say that although Long Beach is a huge city, it has a small town vibe. And so Agnes, what you're saying like that, that's part of it allows you to feel that small town vibe when we're all referencing the same places and we're all familiar with the same neighborhoods. And I think it's easy in today's world to become very individualistic and to just kind of be in your own bubble. And you could go all the way out to LA and come back, but it's very disconnected. And there's something very special about staying, staying here in Long Beach, staying within your local community, giving back to your local community, um, and also making friends within your community. Because when you're going somewhere that's only 10 minutes from your house, that means the people you're meeting are also living in your neighborhood and you know that those relationships can extend even past just like improv class um and yeah and people should go to help together because it's a very unique environment as others have said like there, there's a lot of different improv schools but something that makes help together super unique is that it's very warm and welcoming there isn't any competition it's all about fostering like a comfortable environment for people to explore something they've probably or maybe they have done it or they haven't done it but it allows you to explore it super super comfortably with people at all different levels 
alongside you. And like, they seriously, yes. And is like, so like it is done perfectly at Hell together in every way, not just in our improv classes, but the way everyone interacts with each other as well. Uh, as an invader from outside the community, uh, I can just say that like, uh, like held together is, is is such a wonderful introduction to the Long Beach community. I, uh, I like I said, I did it through a Google search, so I just happened to choose held together, which is which is in Long Beach, which is about like a thirty minute to forty five minute drive, depending on the time of day, and it is well worth it. I've met so many people, and I've learned so much, so many things about the Long Beach community and it it's like like if, like before this i would never have made the joke about like you know the hill of signal and then like signal hill so now i can now i can do that and like agnes was saying it's just like one of those little things that you would never get in like a, a bigger uh bigger improv class i guess or or something where I mean, maybe they have their own things that we, I just don't know, but it's wonderful to be part of this community and it's part, and I think it's also wonderful that, that that community helps me like learn about like the, <laughs> wow, the inception of that community, learning, learning about that community, learning about the next community outside of that. So I think Long Beach really should support all kinds of arts just to reach out to people in general. Okay, so I fact-checked what I said earlier. <laughs> I was right. <laughs> so Long Beach has like 440,000 uh, people in it. Uh, the largest city in each state, Birmingham, Birmingham, ah, Birmingham Alabama, 200,000. Mm. Anchorage, Alaska, 290,000. Uh, Little Rock, Arkansas, 193,000. <laughs> so those are just the A states. <laughs> Not to even the, the next letter in the alphabet. So I, I'm fact checking myself and I was correct. <laughs> I'm glad we're not spreading fake news. No. <laughs> <laughs> um, just, I, I, I spoke on this uh, beforehand, but just very quickly, also one of the best, best things in my experience has been uh, friendships. Um, Held Together is about this community, but the, the community isn't there without the friendships that happen. And I think as I think, I think Brian mentioned this in the interview for social uh, or um, distant desires, but um, it's hard to make friendships as adults. Like, I think it's just, it, it's when you don't have like school or like work, but like work is sometimes like, those are my work friends, not like my, like, you know, at least in my experience. Uh, sorry to any work friends who are watching this. Um, <laughs> uh, um, but, you know, it, it, the the best people in my life today are people I've met from through hell together because we're all being vulnerable together and, and playing together and being silly together. And after classes, you know, if I'm teaching, one of my favorite things is watching students like leave off in like pairs and like, you know, like, Oh, look at, there's a friendship forming. The mantra for hell together is improv for life. What does that mean to you? Um, to me, I mean, I, th I think we all kind of touched upon this in, in some of our answers is that, uh, and especially Nelly, uh, the philosophy of yes ending to accept um, one's ideas and not to judge it, um, to be open to the other person. Uh, that philosophy of constructive criticism, well, not, I wouldn't say constructive crit criticism, but to just be open um and to new ideas and, and new things and new experiences um i think is something that we can live by for for anyone for the rest of their life and it, it'll always lead them in the in the right direction so um i will echo kind of what richard was saying yay friendships um and yeah like in terms of improv for life it's not only has it kind of transformed all of our more introverted lives to at least even slightly more extroverted and just a little braver in, in any day social situations, but um, uh, also, yeah, friendships, relationships in terms of just 
truly community building because um, in those LA schools, it's people are cycling in and out of the school so quickly because they're all trying to be actors more than trying to do the improv. And so they cycle in and out very fast. But here at Held Together, people are, once you're in, you're in. And so it like, that people are keep repeating classes. You see the same people over and over. And so you get to know the entire community. Like if we're performing on stage, we usually know the entire audience or we've at least seen them before. And as they come to more shows or they're in more classes, we'll get to know pretty much everybody inside the whole held together community. Um, and so it, it truly is like a whole chunk of your life is becomes held together. So it, it really, truly is improv for life. For life. So when we joined Held Together, there's this blood oath that we had to do, which was <laughs> for life. Um, I guess anyone who's joining will soon soon realize that. No. <laughs> there's no blood pack. Um, no, so, so it was interesting. When I first found Held Together, again, uh, what I said before is, I went through the Long Beach Parks and Rec catalog and it was under the enrichment section. And, you know, that for, at that time that was odd for me because, you know, improv for me at the time, I just thought it was just like, like acting class. Like it was just, you know, it was just something fun. It was just an, it was an activity is sort of what I saw it as. But, um, but with Held Together, they definitely, definitely use the for life part in that it applies to other parts of your life. Like for me, I know that um, I, with, when you're on stage, you can't control the whole scene. Um, whereas in my life, I like to try to control the whole scene. <laughs> but it's, it's actually helped me to kind of relax a little in my personal life and just sit back and sort of let things happen and know that it's, it's okay. It's, it'll be a learning experience for me and other people around to to not be able to try to control everything. And then also to Richard's point about just the friendships, like it's, it's, it's amazing, you know, how much we talk outside of the class and, and, and sometimes, you know, the, I know the classes would end like at 915 and we're still standing in front of the building at 1015 <laughs> and we're, we're like, you know, we should probably go. <laughs> we should all probably go home now. <laughs> that is so true. <laughs> Even later than 10, 15. Sometimes we're there until the next day and we're like, oh, there's no. <laughs> um, yeah, Im improv for life. And I think I've like touched on it in some of my other answers really just means like, it's not just about improving your improv or improving it, like helping your acting skills. It really is like you're walking out of class every day with a new skill set to apply to everything, whether it's your job, your friendships, your relationships with your family, whether it's however you carry yourself through your life, it just changes your perspective. And it, yeah, it, 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 it's not just about improv, it's about life. And that, that's what that mantra means. And we really do live it every single day. And to be able to connect with others in class in our experiences and relate that like, oh yeah, like I saw this change for me as a result and somebody else maybe saw improvement in a different area of their life. We all have like different stories of how it's helped us in our individual life experiences. And it continues to, there's no stopping point. Like, okay, I've reached the maximum amount of learning. Like there's always more room to grow and learn and keep practicing. Improv like imparts all these skills that you use every day that that you kind of take for granted sometimes because it, it, it for me it, it's very difficult to to banter with strangers uh especially at my old customer service job i like i feel like there was a, a vast difference between uh what i did what i was before and held together and then afterwards when i was able to be like Hey, let's, let's talk about local sports team. I don't know anything about that sport, but I can still talk to you about it now because I can yes and what you say. And uh, it, 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 was like an, it was like an amazing realization about how much listening goes into, goes into a normal conversation. And also touching on the whole for life like aspect of, I feel like I, like I want to be part of this forever. Right. Like, 
I, I don't see myself ever being like, well, I'm done later. And I'm like, you know, just disappearing from held together. So it, it's such a wonderful thing. Like all these, all these skills and all these connections just make you want to be part of this for life. So improv for life is, is really just that it's, it's improv. It's taking improv and this thing that we get to do on stage and bringing it to your life for life improvement. Um, you know, and it's not necessarily we're, in our classes. We're not like when you yes. And on stage, what that means in life is this, this and this, that feels a little like on the nose. That's not really like how I teach. I don't, that's not how Darren teaches. Um, but through the practice of saying yes in scenes of, of acceptance in scenes of, of adding things in scenes, uh, it just sort of bleeds over into your life. Uh, Hey, if you want to learn more about held together improv for life, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash H E L D two number two together. Uh, you can also look at heldtogether.com and sign up for our newsletter and see all of the happenings that are going on. If taking improv classes with Hell Together sounds like something that you might want to try, uh, I recommend checking out our website. That's uh, www.heldtogether.com. That's held, the number two, together.com. You can also check out our um, Held Apart show on YouTube at youtube.com slash held together. Um, and you can also find us on all the social media pages uh, if you search Held Together on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Uh, hey, if you want to learn more about Held Together Improv for Life, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel, youtube.com slash H-E-L-D two, number two, together. Uh, you can also look at heldtogether.com and sign up for our newsletter and see all of the happenings that are going on.